in this talk, what are we going to learn? First is to define incidental and missed gallbladder cancer. Secondly, we will know the preventive strategies for incidental and missed gallbladder cancer. Uh, I'll especially stress on management of T1B disease and T4 disease. I'll uh, come to uh, the talk where why these two are important. Uh, then we'll see the preoperative assessment and planning for resectable GBC. And lastly, we'll see in short the role of laparoscopy, PET scan and chemotherapy in surgically uh, managing the patient. So to begin with definitions, early gallbladder cancers are lesions up to T2 and anything above T2 or anything that is node positive is considered as locally advanced gallbladder cancer. Now, when a gallbladder cancer is detected on the histopathology specimen postoperatively, or you do a lab polycystectomy and you open the specimen and you find a mass, it's called an incidental gallbladder cancer. Missed gallbladder cancer is when there was a mass preoperatively, but it was either missed on preoperative imaging or the imaging was suboptimal or the histopathology was suboptimal and you missed diagnosing a gallbladder cancer. Now, these patients usually present with either a local recurrence or a widely metastatic disease. And that is why it is important not to miss a gallbladder cancer. Because uh, as Dr. Fadke rightly pointed out, uh, gallbladder cancer is an inherently aggressive tumor. The overall five-year survival rates are only 5%. But if you diagnose these tumors early, say in stage one or two, and you have them undergo radical uh, dissection, then the survival goes up to 90 to 95%. As the stage increases, stage three and early stage four, with only node positive disease, the five-year survival drops to around 20 to 40%. And metastatic GBC, even if they can undergo chemotherapy, the survival, as Sir pointed out, is only 5%. So incidentally diagnosed gallbladder cancers, if, the, if there are no signs of metastasis, then T stage is used to guide all therapeutic decisions. If the histopathology shows T1A disease, then a simple cholecystectomy that was already done with negative margins is adequate treatment and these patients only need to be observed over a period of time. Anything higher than that, T1, B, T2 or T3, they need to undergo an exhaustive workup to assess for re-resection as long as the patient is fit enough. T4 usually uh, by their very nature are advanced tumors and generally incidental diagnosis of T4 disease is uh, not known. Why this distinction is important? Because residual disease as the T stage increases, the chances of finding a residual disease goes on increasing. And especially if the cystic duct margin is involved in the uh, lab polycystectomy specimen, then the chances of finding disease in the bile duct is up to 30%. Of uh, laparoscopic surgery, port site metastasis is a, a real uh, danger. And uh, originally it was recommended that all port site metastasis should un undergo excision. Now, within six to seven months of diagnosis of gallbladder cancers, most people will show up with a, a port site metastasis. And port site metastasis by itself is not a, a disease presentation. It is a systemic spread of the disease. So even if you resect the port sites, they will not add to the survival of the patient because most of these will present with peritoneal recurrence. Now, uh, biliary spillage, again, with uh, increasing laparoscopic surgery, biliary spillage is a real danger. And across multiple studies, nearly one third of patients have undergone uh, laparoscopic surgeries where the bile has spilled into the peritoneal cavity. Now, when these uh, patients uh, have a gallbladder cancer diagnosed in histopathology, the staging goes straight from either a T1A or T1B to stage four, because there is a peritoneal spread. So, Avoiding biliary spillage is of most importance when you are suspecting preoperatively that the patient might have gallbladder cancer. And again, those with gallbladder cancer will have a much higher GB perforation rate and biliary spillage rate compared to those with only gallstones. As you can see, the survival drastically drops with gallbladder with uh, biliary spillage as compared to that without biliary spillage. So that, this was about incidental GBC. When we come to missed gallbladder cancer. There are a few points which Amar has already covered where you should pay attention to the imaging and avoid missing these uh, markers of malignancy. First and foremost is asymmetric gallbladder wall thickening. So 
in high index in high in high endemic zones where uh, patients routinely come with smaller tumors and uh, the tumors are missed a high index of suspicion is necessary prior to taking them up for surgery so the preventive strategies for uh, to prevent incidental and missed gallbladder cancers are high index of suspicion needs to be kept in endemic areas there should be a liberal use of pet scans and tumor markers that is ca99 and ca if the preoperative imaging shows any signs of malignancy when you put in a laparoscope even for a gallstone disease it is advisable that you evaluate completely the peritoneal cavity including the paracolic gutters so as not to miss any sign of peritoneal disease uh, as i already said avoid gb perforations during surgery use of endo bags now initially all these gallbladders used to be delivered right through the port without any endo bags and that contributed to peritoneal spread so now use of endo bags is recommended for specimen retrieval irrespective of the intraoperative findings again avoid port side contamination always open the specimen on table before you close the patient so as if there is any mucosal irregularity if there is any sign that this may be a gallbladder cancer you can take call about the further management of the patient on table and always 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 send the specimen for histopathology even if the mucosa is smooth even if there is no sign of malignancy it is medical legally and medically mandatory that all these specimens go for histopathology examinations and as always you should have a low threshold for referral anything that you feel is beyond your expertise referring the patient should not be or uh, taken as a sign of incompatibility or inefficiency primum non nascere you should first think of the patient and then of what you can on cannot do cannot do now you have diagnosed or you are suspecting a, a gallbladder cancer as amar rightly pointed out ultrasound is an excellent screening tool however the diagnostic milieu of gallbladder cancer rests on ct scan a good quality ct will give you most of the information that is needed to plan the surgery when you are suspecting a nodal disease when you are suspecting a peritoneal disease then a pet scan needs to be added staging laparoscopy and tumor markers also are important in these patients especially when you are uh, suspecting local spread of the disease when there is local organ involvement then for duodenal involvement uh, per je endoscopy and for colonic involvement especially the hepatic flexure a uh, colonoscopy needs to be added in these patients to see whether there is any intraluminal infiltration that would that would make these patients probably unresectable now the extent of surgery as we discussed when the uh, tumor is only t1a a simple cholecystectomy as long as the cystic duct margin is clear that would be enough and the patient will be put on uh, observation for the rest of uh, the period anything about t1b and the amount of resection goes up you have uh, multiple options including a wedge resection you uh, segment 4b and 5 resection extended right hepatectomy fixation of the extra hepatic bile duct and a multivisceral resection now uh, in the in previous times segment 4b and 5 resection was considered standard and recommended however newer data has come in that it does not offer any survival advantage over a wedge resection as long as clear margins are maintained so a non anatomical wedge resection around the tumor will provide you with a equivalent survival at the cost of preserving the liver parenchyma major hepatectomy such as a right hepatectomy or an extended right hepatectomy is only indicated if you cannot obtain a negative margin without doing that resection routine bile duct resection is not recommended we'll come to that later why it is not recommended but unless you are getting a negative margin only for lymph node retrieval routine bile duct resection is not recommended now again it is uh, recommended that you should have a staging laparoscopy prior to re resection whenever you have a incidentally diagnosed gallbladder cancer you are going in for re resection suspect peritoneal spread and do a staging laparoscopy prior to to avoid an unnecessary laparotomy and as you can see the extension of the tumor horizontally up to the p point uh amar spoke about the p point it is the uh, branching out of the right posterior uh, septoral portal vein so when the tumor infiltrates the p point that is when your extent of liver resection increases the difference between gallbladder cancer and hyler cholangiocarcinoma is that hyler cholangiocarcinomas even if they do involve up to the p point 
the spread would be along the ducts so the patients would already be jaundiced the patient would present earlier if gallbladder cancer the patient the presentation would be quite late because these patients will the tumors will infiltrate through the parenchyma and the right uh, the p point would be involved without involving the bile ducts at all so these patients may not present with jaundice but you will have a large amount large volume of tumor that is infiltrating the p point so uh, for these patients an extended right hepatectomy or a right trisectionectomy is the procedure of choice now when you are doing any kind of major hepatic resection uh, as dr vaglevi also point out it is important to have a flr of at least 30% in a normal liver if the patient has already received chemotherapy or the patient has uh, steatohepatitis then it is advisable to have at least a 40% of future liver remnant prior to taking the patient for such major resections it is important to avoid post hepatectomy liver failure so that an adequate flr is maintained then you can avoid phlf and use of parenchyma sparing techniques such as a transverse section or a wedge resection with clear margins these are indicated so that you can avoid phlf now when the tumor infiltrates the duodenum you can do a duodenal sleeve resection or you can go ahead with a distal gastrectomy with supraambulatory duodenectomy if the tumor infiltrates the hepatic flexure you can do a sleeve resection of the involved part of the hepatic flexion however with such extended resections especially uh, something like a hepatopancreatic duodenectomy it is only in selected cases that they are indicated now uh, an spd if it's a papillary tumor involving the gallbladder and the lower cbd or if there is a isolated retropancreatic node that is adherent to the head of pancreas then you may do an hpd but these resections will have a high operative morbidity and mortality and since gallbladder cancer has extensive peritoneal spread the survival will still be poor so local visceral spread and block uh, adjacent organ resection is still not associated with improved long term survival so whether or not to do is uh, should be taken on a case to case basis in a multidisciplinary meet you have to remember that tumor biology and stage at presentation are more diagnostic than a simple r0 status now when we talk of lymphadenectomy the minimum nodes minimum number of nodes that should be resected in a gallbladder cancer is 6 for accurate staging of the disease uh, now we have the newer n1 and n2 uh, stages in eighth edition where uh, it is by number but when we think of the older n2 n1 and n2 system where anything beyond the regional nodes were considered n2 these patients even if the number of nodes is less the extent to which it has spread to these nodes indicates that it's an advanced disease and in these patients you should definitely consider role of adding a neoadjuvant therapy to downstage the disease it will give you a biology of the tumor if the patient does not respond to chemotherapy then anyways the patient would not have had a good survival after resection even if the number of nodes that is uh, positive is less than 3 now coming to bile duct resection routine bile duct resection does not improve survival so unless and until the cystic duct margin is positive and you need to resect the bile duct to get a margin clearance it is not recommended that you resect bile duct uh, routinely it does not improve the nodal yield and it increases the morbidity and mortality for these patients now a patient who presents with jaundice more often than not especially uh, if the patient has already undergone a cholecystectomy a large amount of these patients if they present with jaundice they will be unresectable they will frequently require bile duct resection but still they will end up with a r1 resection and even if they do undergo r0 resection the disease free survival is less than 6 months so with with such prohibitive risk the uh, treatment in jaundiced patients is rarely possible with surgery now these are the prognostic factors for uh, patients who have undergone surgery for gallbladder cancer like i said t stage is the most important factor that decides the prognosis of the patient the pathological that is the tnm stage the margin status the intravascular invasion these are other factors and tumor grade also forms an independent variable now the role of pet scan nearly uh or uh, nearly 15% nearly 38% of patients who were suspected to have advanced disease 
in the in these patients pet scan alter the management and save the patients from an unnecessary radical surgery because uh, more than 95% will have uh, advanced disease if there is nodal involvement now a uh, role of chemotherapy uh, in the new adjuvant setting as part of the surgical plan uh, the abco2 trial was for advanced disease and uh, it mainly included patients who were unresectable however they found that some of these patients did translate to resectability uh, and that established gemcitabinin cystatin as new adjuvant therapy and that protocol was again uh, uh, followed by the tata hospital and they developed their own criteria for uh, borderline resectable gbc used in use for new adjuvant uh, chemotherapy and they have they had more than 40% uh, curative uh, intent resections after gemsis but these results were not replicated in any subsequent trials so as of now role of new adjuvant therapy to downstage gallbladder cancers is still under question so the take home message of this talk is avoid missing gbc have a good preoperative imaging even for gallbladder gallbladder stones and biliary colics do good quality liver function tests and avoid missing any gallbladder masses if the gallbladder cancer is incidentally diagnosed have a complete staging do not skip out on any imaging uh, parts of the stages there is role of laparoscopy and pet scan as i already explained in the workup of the patient and laparoscopy is mandatory before re resection hepatic resection the extent depends on the t stage of the patient and there is as of now limited role for bile duct resection and multivessel resection thank you